Get the lowdown on the comic turned actor who's coming to BBC One. Stand up, fall over. It's Lee Evans tonight at 10.35. Two, it's only TV, but I like it. It's like Comic Relief, only we keep all the money. So do keep those calls coming in. Joining Team Captain Julian Clary this week is Mr. Keith Duffy. <laughs> now, when Keith was in the Big Brother house, his inability to go to the toilet was one of the hotly debated topics of conversation. He did finally manage to go after four days. And you thought Vanessa had tears in her eyes. <laughs> Is four days? I'm all right now, Jonathan. I bet you are. <laughs> Thanks for sharing. No worries, plenty more to come. <laughs> and on Julian's right is Patrick Kilty. <laughs> when Patrick presented Comic Relief in Ireland, he got the biggest audience in Irish television history. Yes. Beaten only by the moment that Ian Paisley said, Tonight, Matthew, I'm going to be Tina Turner. <laughs> <laughs> On Phil's team this week, it is of course Mr. Jeremy Spake, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Former Aeroflot worker Jeremy Spake is fluent in Russian. His most used phrases are, sorry about the delay and, what do you mean, gay? <laughs> <laughs> Bad do. <dude. laughs> You're making it worse for yourself, I'm telling you. <laughs> also fresh from the Big Brother house, it's Vanessa Feltz, ladies and gentlemen. Vanessa famously fell out with Chris Eubank over housework. Every time Chris offered to demest off the surfaces around the thing, <laughs> she had to wipe everything down all over again. <laughs> Those are our teams, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> our first round is TV trivia, where the teams are given three clues to an infamous piece of telly history. Please tell me what you think links these three clips. <laughs> And a spectacular couple nearest the camera are Stephen Graham and Gillian Smith. Jill's only 16, Stephen 23, he works as a bank official. And if he cashes checks while doing a routine like this, the bank must be spectacularly successful. <laughs> That's dungarees, Ronan Keating and disco dancing. What do you think? Has Ronan just bought a new torch? <laughs> Actually, Ronan wasn't flying so much as dangling. That's true. He was dangling in the woods. Was the bloke, the disco dancing fellow, arrested for dangling in the woods in Northern Ireland somewhere? <laughs> Is that a fellow? Because he's a big, long lad. He had a lot of good moves going on there. I, I but it was it's so obviously he'd gone, ah, Mirid, just jig about a bit and I'll do me somersaults. <laughs> because he was, he was going nuts and she was just going... <laughs> yeah, apparently that's how they talk about it. <laughs> you oh, counted that on a regular basis. Yeah, that's... Come on, uh, Jonathan, with his very early plays, he set a very low bar for the Irish accent. Oh, tonight. but Jesus, come on now. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> it's like you're back home, isn't it, Keith? Oh, no, you left out the, the key word for the Irish lingo. Oh. <laughs> Roland's singing there, Life is a Roller Coaster. And no roller coaster. What? There was no roller coaster there, was there? Something That's literal. You Sorry. <laughs> you know, I mean, you can't. I mean, it's crazy. What was going on there? There was no roller coaster. Ah! Evil mirror! Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Vanessa, if you're feeling left out, just slip that up in front of There we go. There we go. <laughs> Firm of Mexican lawyers. Hello. Hey, uh, we are Sanchez, Sanchez and Sanchez. <laughs> Better than the Irish accent. I'm sticking with <laughs> Do you know that um, I once spent 40 minutes in an Irish bog? <laughs> <laughs> I was looking for Pete. <laughs> <laughs> Is it true you're married? Indeed. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hope us all, then. <laughs> uh, it's very, very bad dancers. 
dungarees, quick fitters, you yeah. see, because I was once rear-ended um, by a little Austin <laughs> on the M1, and the quick fitters came and pulled me off in front of a little chef. <laughs> and a copy of that video is available in all good I have a funny feeling, I know what it is, but I know you wouldn't do that to me on television. What would we not do to you, Keith? We've got, we've got very bad dancing and Ronan and Dungarees. Irish. That's what I'm saying, I knew they wouldn't do And people in Dungarees, which... It brings me back about eight years. <laughs> to maybe one of the first performances that we might have had on television. Well, obviously if it was down to me, we wouldn't do that to you. <laughs> but be Jesus, I'm not the only pink on this show. <laughs> when you're famous. Was of course Boy's own sensational first TV appearance on the Late Late Show with Gay Byrne. Gay Byrne is often mocked about his slightly camp name, but it's better than the long version. His real name is Gabriel Byrne Baby Byrne Disco Inferno. <laughs> Julian's team, what connects these three clips? I am the woman, the Earth Mother. Something for everyone there, I feel. <laughs> Bow ties, Pam, Pat Butcher, St. Clement, and a male stripper. Can we see the, the stripper again? Yeah, which one? Yeah. Do you, do you? I'm sure we don't need. Do we need to see that? Yeah, very important. It's got no tackle, Nick. <laughs> Too, unless it's just a residue. But... <laughs> and he's got white gloves. Is he a snooker referee? <laughs> well, there's a man tying a, a, dick, a dicky bow. Yeah. That reminds me of you, Bank, when you get ready to leave the house. Did you get on with Chris at all? No. You in Why not? What was the fiction there? Just tell him. It's a very simple explanation for why you didn't get on. Well, what actually happened was. <laughs> Uh, we were all sharing this dressing room in Dublin, uh -huh. doing this supermodel show for charity. And uh, Chris had asked me a few times to ring this girl in his office that seemed he was a bit of a fan. Right. So I rang the girl, you know, no problem, had a chat with the girl. And uh, as the night was going on, I was having a couple of glasses of wine, chilling out. I thought we were all a big family in this dressing room, you know, mates, all right, mate, you know. Yeah, yeah. We're walking down the corridor at the back of the Point Depot in uh, Dublin. And Chris is walking with his walking stick and giving it the full shapes. And I just thought it'd be really funny with my glass of wine to go, hell yeah, Chris. <laughs> I'll just be clear on this one point. You went up to a boxer who had a <laughs> and you grabbed his knackers. So, so when you got in the house, really, there was... So I, went there to, a... I apologised to him, and then later on I apologised in front of all the guests who had no idea what I was apologising for. And the way Chris had made it out, everybody in, in, the, uh, in, the, in the house actually thought that something to a greater deal had gone well, on. We thought they'd yeah. done it. <laughs> I'm sure they have done that. it. I thought they, yeah, because they were in love. I thought, thought it was, it was a another strip. Absolutely, that's what it seemed like. And twice. because you and Amphia didn't hit it off either. Now, did uh, you? Oh, at any stage... You might say that I couldn't possibly say. Well, that. you didn't. But I'm just wondering. Was any stage whenever you grabbed her bollocks and asked her? <laughs> I spent quite a lot of time just sucking her nipples, and she seemed to like it. <laughs> Well, well, there was no telling. The combination of those two stories, that's sorted me out for the next two weeks. <laughs> well, I reckon Pat there is in a, in a failed Turkish Delight commercial. Yeah. The way she sort of shimmied across there. Um, How long have you been married? Me. Well, that's, that's really of no consequence to you, really, is it? And, uh, that's, obviously, that's obviously 
obviously Julian on um, hard times. Shall we just clear this up? Because I'm under the impression gay men have a kind of a radar about this kind of thing. Well, if he has, then he's obviously getting the wrong signals. But maybe, I can say. maybe you're like a stealth bomber. Maybe you're going in under the radar. <laughs> It's not you, you can't help it. You're confusing the signal. I could be, but I can assure you it's not intentional. I, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not saying it is. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to help you out. <laughs> <laughs> hey, God, I've got the Irish to fall back on. <laughs> anyway, what do you think? Any thoughts? Or shall I go back? Uh, it's it, Frank. Yeah. Valentine's Night Valentine's surprise. Valentine's Night. With his flashy um, bow tie. And why, why the stripper? Page, page. He went, he went he naked. He was naked, um, but to back, back, back door. All right, OK. Well, me. let's see. Let's see how close they are. you're right, it was of course the moment on EastEnders when Frank turned up wearing nothing but a bow tie. Mike Reed confessed that he was totally naked when he filmed steamy romps with Pam St. Clement. I now pause for a second as you wipe your tea off the telly. <laughs> Bookies have given odds of 16 to 1 that Frank Butcher shot Phil Mitchell. My theory, however, is that Phil witnessed that scene and shot himself. <laughs> a bonus question for both teams here. Have a look at this and see if you know what's going on in this clip. This is surreal. This is, I must say, this is one of the most surreal experiences of my life. <laughs> Starting to back up that tube a bit, so be careful. Oh. Well, I think one of you has an unfair advantage, but what the hell was going on there? Well, I was there, and we were basically... <laughs> the case, Moss. No, what I'm saying is it was me and not you. That's the thing. It could have been me. It's not Phil, it's my good self. And we were we were making turkeys for the Queen. You were making turkeys? We were. I think the turkeys were already there, weren't they? No, no, no. no. You see, no, he, no, was, he, told me he, he was, was there massaging the stags and enjoying every minute of it, your man there. Massaging who's, the stags? Who's a millionaire as a result of it. And um, he was getting me to blow and suck in all the right places. <laughs> Let me give you one last chance to answer those questions Julie's been putting your way here. <laughs> You're positive. Absolutely. I have to say, it's the most disgusting thing anybody could ever be asked to do. Yeah, I think we all assumed that before we <laughs> made them out. Where are you going? And what do you have to arouse the turkey first? You show him a magazine with, like, new turkeys in Now, what he does is he, he sits there and he makes these, like, like and they go mad. They get really excited and they run around with their legs up in the air and all sorts of things. It's very bizarre. And what were you actually sucking? Semen. <laughs> And then what you have to do is you then have to go into the hen house where there's about three and a half thousand. I don't want to know what you're doing there. You shoot it like a pygmy. You pick it up, you've got to get it right. You've got to be quick. And as they walk off, they shake with excitement. You right? go home with turkey batter all round your mouth. Absolutely. And you a married man. I haven't eaten turkey since, I have to say. Did you go home and kiss your wife with that mouth? Certainly not. Any other gobbling experiences you'd like to see? I think we'll leave that to you, Julian. Yeah. <laughs> that was from a series which you did, of course, uh, which was called, was it called The Toughest Job in Britain? It is, but if Julian wants to go to that farm and experience it for himself, I'm sure I can arrange it for you. Well, you know, you started out working for Aeroflot, and uh, now you work on television. Obviously, you go down very well on a pilot. <laughs> Anyway, that was from a series. <laughs> okay, let's have a look at the points at the end of that round, and I see that Julian's team, you have three points, you answered yours correctly, you've got your three plus your bonus point, you're in the lead with four points. Yeah. One last. Yeah. Okay, our next round this evening is called Food and Drink. Now, we've taken a clip of Oz Clark and Jilly Goulden wine tasting, and we've frozen them mid-bullshit. <laughs> Sampling the wine in question, our teams have to guess what ridiculous descriptions Oz and Jilly are about to use. Let's have a look at them in action. I'm going over the, over the Andes to Chile and an old vines carignan. Now, the thing about this one is you get all the lushness of Chilean fruit, but because the carignan is a grape that no one's ever heard of, you get really low price. This is £3.49. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, 
Did the first glass go down nicely then, Keith? <laughs> what are you talking about? It's called wine tasting. I say for it. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> I know you like this stuff, so I've got you some cider in as well. <laughs> Whoa, there you go. Look at that. I think you'll find that's a very good year. <laughs> Give it a smell. Let it settle. 2001, old Somerset. <laughs> Getting turkey semen. <laughs> With a hint of plums. <laughs> oh! Well, plum, plum actually was one of the words that they say. So oh, yeah. Quite yeah. Classical resin. Plum yogurt, mm. yeah. Do you know I've got a fine vintage collection at home? Really? Yes. Maybe Jeremy would like to join me for 69. <laughs> Making me quite peckish. Mm. Very cheesy balls. <laughs> oh, but if you give me half an hour, I'm sure I can organise it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you prefer Guinness? I do. Mm. It's a bit heavy. I like to see the landlord putting on his stout pump. <laughs> he gets a nice big head going. <laughs> Butter. Mm. Lard. <laughs> Cheese. Oh. Paprika. No. Uh, <laughs> eggs. Okay, okay, okay. okay. I see you found your level there, Keith. Look at that. Dusty. Oh. Uh, cake you cheating Irishman. <laughs> uh, okay. Very nice. Very, very uh, nice. Smoky. Yeah. Christmas. Dusty. Yeah. Uh, tea ling ling. You know what? Though? I'm delighted you can read because I had me doubts earlier. Uh, I'm gonna. I, look, I know you cheat, but I'm gonna give you Dusty. Christmassy, Christmassy. <laughs> All right, you got Christmas. You got those two. Okay. A hint, of, a hint like, of cake. Like five, 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 five. Oh, you got one as well. That's very good. <laughs> well, we're doing well now. Now the game's going to chip. That's why. Right. That's very good. Brownie, <laughs> you know what? I think Not we've got it all. <laughs> that was incredible. Keith. Oh. You were cheating, weren't you? How can you cheat? He was reading these. Reading How could he read that? I've never seen print he that got small. Dusty and Christmas off. Somebody We've got... get a West Midlands serious crime <laughs> squad! <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, ladies and gentlemen, I'll ask you. Do you think he was cheating? Yes. <laughs> that was clearly a yes. <laughs> can I just say he's been framed for a crime he did not come out with? <laughs> Let's see what they said and how they said it. Mmm. It's got a gorgeous sort of Caking, it's like sort of um, fudge brownies or sort of Christmas cake spice. It's dusty, smoky, cakey, spicy. Do you get a milkiness to it? I think it's a bit like plum yogurt, the perfect thing to follow this incredibly wizened barbecue. I think it's the perfect thing to put on the wizened barbecue. <laughs> I'm not going to touch this barbecue, but let's hope we have the sort of summer where we can all have loads of barbecues. Let's hope. <laughs> and at the end of that round, I see that Phil's team, although you did very well, you have merely six points, where Julian, you're in the lead with seven points. Oh, wow. Round three is channel hopping, where our guests have 90 seconds to act out <coughs> clues to five TV themes for our team captains. Vanessa and Jeremy, if you'd be so kind as to make your way around the back to this uh, enormous TV behind me there. This week, our humorous earmuffs are based on Thunderbirds. Phil, could you don these fantastic Lady Penelope earmuffs? <laughs> And here's your uh, remote control. Uh, now then, now then. <laughs> Let the channel hopping commence. Blood on the carpet. Yeah. Well done there. Congratulations. Worlds, when worlds collide, I don't know. Oh. Best of both worlds! Yeah, well done. Nice Literal thinking there. Or the lateral thinking. Oh, she's off again. Here we go. <laughs> no! Black flatboard. Uh, rub, rubbing out the weather. Rub, yeah, rubbing. Yeah, rubbing. Evil twin! <laughs> Evil! I don't know. No! <laughs> Never 
you are the buzzcocks. <laughs> chewing, chewing the f***. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Wiping out eraser. Oh, you are so close. <laughs> you got the last one right, but you were too late there. Well done, Vanessa. Yeah. Good work, Jeremy. Congratulations. Some nice work there. Did you get them all? No, we no, didn't get them all. Missed the last one. Julian, let me give you that there. Patrick and Keith have already made their way round the back. They're ready for you. If you could put your amusing Virgil from Thunderbirds here, my son. Okay. I think you'll look rather well dapper in that. Can't wait. Let's have a look at that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Do a bit of puppet stuff for us. Go on. No, I don't choose to. <laughs> oh, go on. Just a little bit. Yeah! <laughs> the least convincing puppet I've seen all week. <laughs> Let the channel hop in commence. Two you didn't get. The first one was League of Gentlemen. Oh, was it? It's a League of Gentlemen. I wouldn't have got that either. Uh, and the second one was To the Manor Born. Yeah. By the way, good birth giving. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I see at the end of that round that uh, Phil, you now have ten points with your lovely team there. Julian, you drop back a bit. You have ten points as well. It is now time for our Granny's Round. Now, everyone knows that Granny knows best, and that's why they voted that nice Vanessa Feltz out. Because no one knew why they voted No one you. understood that. Why did they vote you it's out instead mystery, of Anthea? It's a mystery, isn't it? It's a mystery. It's all over now. Though. For the viewers at home, if you don't want to know who it is, look away now. And for five points, can you tell me, teams, which TV programme or personality the Grannies are talking about? It's a film that everybody could look at it, couldn't they? You know, it'd take you away. And lot, see, like, the others got out of football, don't they? I mean, a lot of people don't like football, do they? People like, um, like top of, a mu top of a mushroom. And it was green. Well, they're just turning over and doing patterns, doing zigzags, don't they? Do zigzags, they go round the bend, don't they? They go round the track, they come back again, and then they're speeding round, and then they go on one side, you know, with the things, and they're practising. Very much like stags when they have their antlers and they're going to you know whatever and I thought and they were it would it were after this green thing and I thought well what is it all about the things that they can do it's actually terrific you know and um, for things to come you know it makes it make the mind boggle yeah <laughs> okay uh, let's give Julian's team the first crack of this um, Formula One 
Formula One. Is that where you're going with? Well, oh, I think you're, the, you're the captain. I think the mushroom with the stag sort of rules out Formula One. <laughs> <laughs> I really don't know. Uh, yeah. well, keep yeah. watching. You're not in the house now, you can talk freely. <laughs> 0894. Oh. <laughs> Gladiators. Robot Wars. You think Robot Wars? It's been written down. Okay. What do you think? One man and he's Doc. You think so? Well, I can tell you that you're not white. But you are. Well done, <laughs> Keith Jackson. Well done, you. Well done, you. And all it took, ladies and gentlemen, was a bottom up of red wine and a pint of cider. <laughs> well, it is as great for isn't it? <laughs> Let's have a look, though, at the uh, other things they had to say about this show. They got this thing that's like a flamethrower. And it, it just burns out with the success, you know. And if you push them over to another corner, corner there's another machine there that's got a great big blooming hammer and smashes you on the head you know and then if you push him to another part of the arena you, those great big spikes come up to the set of the floor you know and, and puncture the, the, the contestant they won't stab it again and then it pushed it to the end and they fall down this thing you see well they've gone then haven't they whatever until they were like you know because they did one and whatever but the lights and the everything it's brilliant I've only seen it once. <laughs> they were talking about Robot Wars. Well done, Keith. Fantastic, were they? It was just a war, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Last Christmas, Marks and Spencer brought out special Robot Wars pajamas, or as fans of the show call them, Pajama <laughs> Clones. <laughs> Before, if you don't want to know the next mystery subject, look away now. And teams, try and tell me who or what the grannies are talking about. Oh, the oh, well, she's, uh, the one with the beard. That was uh, <laughs> the no, she, that was a uh, is um, the in-law, wasn't it? If she got married to the son, wasn't it? Because he he died, didn't he? The other one. <laughs> I thought it was lovely when she when she married Dingy. Yeah, he hasn't got over it yet, anyway. He's still pining for her. She can always put, put a fast one over, can't she? She can say anything. And, you know, she's really attractive in a way because, I mean, she's got them ways. I mean, another one just not only, but she's really lovely with it, isn't she? And she's lollops, doesn't she, really? <laughs> but she does. She does. A lot to work with there, I feel. Uh, what do you think? Dynasty? Dynasty? Do you reckon? Dynasty, you're thinking it's of Dynasty first? one of those plot all over the place shows. Could be any soap, really. Joan Collins from Dynasty. Joan Collins in Dynasty? Uh, I don't know. I've no idea at all. Well, well, give us an answer. Joan Collins, Jonathan. I'm glad you said that. It's wrong. <laughs> Lisa Riley. You think Lisa Riley? Yeah, because I think they're getting a bit confused about the guy with the beard and her mum and... You know what? You know what? She's a bit demented and I think... I'm not going to... I'm not going to accept that answer from you because the fact that Julian's giggling is such a giveaway that you guys are cheating. I just wrote down. Look, that's my hand. I just wrote the time. Lisa Riley. The producer just said to me, don't take it, they're cheating. I could tell from looking your eye that could it right. Where could we be cheating from? Exactly. Now, f*** off. <laughs> but there's something about you right now that says to me, I'm sorry, it says cheaty cheats. Look, we've, oh. ju look, we've just had a couple of pints. We don't want any trouble. Just give us a bit. <laughs> <laughs> Duffy, what? I can tell. What can you tell? Look at me seriously in my eyes now. <laughs> Keith, it's obviously not the most important thing in the world. He didn't give you and the no, answer. Will you shut up, Perry? <laughs> I'm going for your weakest link here. <laughs> Did you sneak a peek at the notes before you came out here? Swear to God, love, no. You liar! <laughs> Let your conscience be your guide and we when you lie lying there on your Just jacket. because we're Catholics, you can't give us that guilt trip shit, all right? <laughs> I can see you in that booth now. Oh, oh Father! Oh, Father! Oh, oh, Father. Oh, I've done a terrible God. thing now. <laughs> oh, but Jesus, tell me how many Hail Marys to wash the blood from my soul. <laughs> I had a look at the piece of paper. <laughs> and it just hit in a little while and I hit it on the sofa. <laughs> and the lovely Ronan, I've let down Ronan. <laughs> and I've let down Shane. And I've let down the others whose name I can't remember. <laughs> you 
hit me, Father, if I am skin. Pakistanis. Well, if they want a fib, they may well win on points this evening, but I think we know who wins on morals. Yeah, and I never thought I'd be saying it to the three of you. <laughs> Let's have a look at the rest of the clip to work out how they would have seen it and then maybe got the answer without cheating. <laughs> She's got this great big round face with a big beaming smile, you know, and, uh, and this infectious laugh that she's got. She is massive, isn't she? <laughs> now you just think if she were... You just think if she could slim and come down, she'd be absolutely beautiful, wouldn't she? I think she looks lovely the way she is. They were talking about Lisa Riley when she was soft. Oh, don't be pathetic now. <laughs> and at the end of that slightly suspicious round, I see that uh, Phil's team, you still have 10 points. Yeah. Julian's team, you're doing unusually well with 20 points. <laughs> We end, as always, with who said that. I'll read out a quote. The teams must buzz in and tell me who said that. If you're ready, teams, fingers on the buzzers. When they grow up, they actually are quite big and they can cause a lot of mess in the house. Uh, is it Westlife's manager? <laughs> no, good answer, though. Little Eubanks. No, not Little Eubanks. Trudy Diddley do the vet thingy. Trudy Diddley do is correct. Trudy must do vets in practice. I've decided that our sisters should be doing it for ourselves. Uh, Prince Edward. <laughs> That was you in the Big Brother house. There yeah. you go. Wax. I hope we'll see some stretch marks tonight. Ruby Wax. Yeah, it's Ruby Wax. How do you know these things? <laughs> I was trying to be funny and I was right. <laughs> I don't think I'll ever see my Charlie again. Uh, Bill. Frank Buff. <laughs> Let the man move on with his life. Vanessa. Daniela Westbrook. No. <laughs> Doc Cotton for me, Standard Play by June Bell. I'm not the fat one. Yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> that one from uh, Pop Stars. Which one from Pop Stars? The, the, the one with the black hair. Well, I need a name. <laughs> two of them have got black hair. Right, what's the other two's names? One's called Mylene and one's called Kim. Mylene. Mylene. It's not Mylene, it's Kim. <laughs> <laughs> ha! You must have had a bit of pocket money to pay for that. Um, well, no, 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 hang on. Um, no, um, no, no, you have to be this one. You must have had a bit of pocket money to pay for that. Anybody? Jane McDonald staff a night. <laughs> well, at the end of that round, I see, unfortunately, the scores stand at you guys with 12 points. Yeah. And you guys have romped ahead with 23 points this week's winner. So let's hear it for the runners up as well. Thanks to Julian Keith and Patrick, Phil, Jeremy and Vanessa. Thanks to the audience here of course as well. Now it's time to crunch those abs and to flex those pecs. Feel the burn ladies and gentlemen as we visit the one and only Becca with her boom. For good night everybody. Now circle. Keep your fingers straight and just circle. Now, Edwin, dear, I want some lovely bumpy music, Edwin. <laughs> oh, here we go. Come on, I'm you very quick with me, dear. All those things. Showing off, you're very good. Oh, George, Edwin, for love. Hello, you. Lawrence. Yeah, I I got your name right, lovely. <laughs> now you're all going to clench. Clench. Stretch, clench, stretch, clench. Oh, you know, I want to hand you on my program again. What are you doing down there, lovey? Well, 